It was my goal today, my dream actually, to get behind this table. So today, I'm gonna show you some other wheelchair users that followed their dreams. So I remember when I first got hurt and I was in the hospital, I thought like my life was over. I had abandoned all of my dreams mentally and thought I could never pursue anything I wanted to do again. I really regret that. If I wanted to, I could have continued on with my sculpture program and become a world-renowned artist. But luckily for you and actually for me, uh, I ended up here instead. So today, I'm gonna show you some other wheelchair users that didn't abandon their dreams and are totally crushing it. All right, so before we start, Andrew, put the thing down there. We gotta make sure that they like and subscribe. So this first guy that we're gonna show you is named Eric Hauk. He is the guitarist of a band called Portugal The Man. And I promise you, if you haven't heard of him, you definitely have, you just don't know you have. Eric is the first wheelchair user to win a Grammy. Like, come on. And the Grammy goes to it's Portugal the man. Ladies and gentlemen. They went double platinum. They also went number one on six different airplay charts. Number one on Billboard. One of their songs broke a record for the most plays in a week. Eric is originally from Alaska and was a successful musician even before his accident that left him with a spinal cord injury. When he was in the hospital, his friends snuck in a guitar and some recording equipment for an impromptu recording session that he didn't even know was gonna happen. Like, he couldn't even sit up on his own. He still like had the neck brace on. <laughs> the nurses even had to come unplug like some of his IVs and stuff because it was, it was making feedback. Like, what incredible friends. This guy has overcome so many challenges on his way to accomplishing his dreams. Their manager would go and scout the venues before the actual concerts to make sure that they were accessible. And if they were, they would strategize a plan in order to actually get him on stage so that he could perform. Accessible tour buses just don't exist, so they slept in a non-accessible RV. Like, every day his bandmates would pick him up in his wheelchair and put him in the RV. And uh, there's some funny pictures of them just like sprawled out on the floor. I think at one point there was a problem where uh, people throwing him in and out of sprinter vans like sprained his ankles so bad that he had to stop and be like, okay, I need two people to help me now because you guys are hurting me. When you use a wheelchair, you have to be a problem solver. You have to become resourceful, but not be afraid of the unknown. All right, so the next person we are gonna be talking about is Ali Stroker. Ali Stroker is the first Broadway actress in a wheelchair to win a Tony. I personally don't know much about Broadway, but I know enough to know that a Tony is a big deal. That's the equivalent of a Grammy, but in Broadway theater. And the Tony Award goes to... Ali Stroker! <laughs> So Allie was paralyzed at age two when she was in a car crash with her family. So basically she spent her entire life rolling around on wheels. She always knew she wanted to be an actress and has been acting her whole life. She was the first wheelchair user to ever get a drama degree from NYU. And she now regularly appears on TV shows and movies. And if you're interested, you can jump on INDB and see. So Allie was the first wheelchair user to get a role on Broadway that wasn't written for a person who uses a wheelchair. I had this dream and I wanted to make it happen, but nobody had ever done it. So there was this part of me that was like, okay, I'm not gonna get my hopes up because maybe it's not possible. So the original character was not a wheelchair user, but she was such a good actor, they decided to just let her go. And she eventually won her Tony for her performance in Oklahoma. Oftentimes, because of your disability, people will tell you no, and people will tell you you can't. But it's your job to not allow those words to affect you and to find a way to make it happen. And you definitely wanna keep an eye out for Allie because she's not going away anytime soon. All right, so the next person we're gonna be talking about is Franklin D. Roosevelt, a former US president, a lifetime politician. But when he was campaigning um, for vice president, he became ill and was diagnosed with polio um, and became paralyzed and started to use a wheelchair. He chose to hide his disability because he felt that the American people 
didn't think that a disabled person was fit to be a leader. And that's kind of an unfortunate reality that still exists today. Like ableism is alive and well. People think if you have a disability, you just inept and you can't do anything. But he's the only president to serve four terms. He harnessed new technologies such as radio where he would address the American public directly. He was also the first president to appear on television. He trained himself to wear leg braces and to speak behind podiums to hide it. It's really rare to find him using his wheelchair or a picture of him in his braces, but I think there's one picture of him using his wheelchair and the design of the wheelchair, it still hasn't been updated since then. It is still the basic idea of a seat with big wheels in the back and little wheels in the front. And as I briefly mentioned in my Shorty Awards acceptance speech, I think it's time for some innovation. I'm so ready to partner up with innovators and designers and engineers and artists and creators to, to really like push the limits and push the boundaries. Hit me up. I'm so interested in trying to find ways to collaborate. For whatever reason, there's no innovation with inside of the space and I think that needs to change. Okay, the next person on this list is a phenomenal woman by the name of Samantha. Samantha Bullock. Samantha was a model before her accident and she always had dreams and aspirations of being on a catwalk of the infamous international fashion shows. She was admiring her dad's gun one day and accidentally shot herself, severing her spinal cord and just destroying her insides. She temporarily put her modeling aspirations on hold and decided to become a wheelchair tennis player and then became the best wheelchair tennis player in all of Brazil. She was frequently told she couldn't walk the runway because she was disabled. And that really kind of like lit a fire inside of her. I think she's very much like me in the sense where if someone tells her that she can't do something, that gives her the motivation to want to prove them wrong. With enough persistence in 2007, she finally accomplished that goal by rolling down the catwalk in London Fashion Week. She now works with designers to include disabled models and inclusive clothing. That is an industry that is the most vain. All they want is skinny, tall people that starve themselves, that are not 19 years old that aren't disabled and because of her persistence she managed to find herself on the catwalk at 39 years old in a wheelchair. What a better role model, especially for young girls than Samantha to say like, hey, listen, like you can be beautiful sitting down, like you can wear pretty clothes sitting down. And I would say the thing that I take from her is never give up. So shout out to Samantha. Please keep doing what you're doing. I really appreciate you. All right, so if you think I'm jacked, this next guy is gonna blow your mind. His name is Nick Scott, the founder of Wheelchair Bodybuilding. At 16 years old, he got into a car crash. He was in, really into athletics, you know, picking up girls, you know, played on the football team, and really was, was devastated and demoralized that he got so fat, he was three hundred pounds. So he discovered bodybuilding and it completely changed his life. He was able to change his physical body and then change his mind to then reflect his body. This guy on stage has the coolest energy. He has a custom wheelchair that he uses on stage that has spinners and underglow, completely ridiculous and audacious, but totally fits on a bodybuilding stage. He has a WNBF and an IFBB Pro card in bodybuilding. One is tested for drugs and one is not tested for drugs. If you are in the untested federation, it is even harder to win if you're a natural bodybuilder, which he's proven he has because he also has a pro card and the WNBF. As I stated before, he is the founder of Wheelchair Bodybuilding. It is a nonprofit that he started to dedicate to growing the sport and awareness. He's also a professional ballroom dancer and is even involved into being a professional motivational speaker. Literally go to wheelchairbodybuilding.com, go to the about section and just read. The way that he talks about his story and talks about how he took something horrible and made it into something good. Like I look up to the guy because it reminds me of myself a lot. I mean, we obviously take different paths, but um, I kind of see him as, you know, the, the grandfather of, of wheelchair bodybuilding, but he's not so old that he's out of touch. Some people just don't get it, but I think Nick definitely gets it. The next person we have on our list is Esther Verheer, commonly regarded as the most dominant athlete in the world. Not the most dominant wheelchair athlete, the most dominant athlete. She has won 48 Grand Slam tournaments, 
23 year in championships, seven Paralympic titles, and she's the world's number one wheelchair tennis player and ended her career on a streak of 470 matches. Can you possibly imagine the type of work ethic it takes to go undefeated for years? I don't care if you're a wheelchair athlete or not, that's impressive. After retirement, decided to create her own foundation called the Esther Verheer Foundation that introduces children and young people with disabilities to sport because she believes, and I believe this too, that sports are one of the greatest ways to get camaraderie inside of the community and be around other individuals like yourselves that you can learn from. She continually finds ways to make it happen regardless of her obstacles. So the next guy on this list, a lot of people are not gonna like, but by the end of it, I think you might like him. His name is Larry Flint the owner of Hustler Magazine. In 1978, a white supremacist attempted to murder him for publishing photos of interracial couples in his magazine. I was shot on my way to the courthouse. I woke up three months later. At a time when sexism, racism, and ableism was at an all-time high, this guy was standing up for his First Amendment rights. And if you're a person with a disability, your First Amendment rights to free speech are incredibly important and not to be taken for granted. Dude is literally like a pimp. He rolls around on an all gold wheelchair. Literally cooler than Lady Gaga's wheelchair. And if you guys remember when Lady Gaga got all that crap for rolling around in a gold wheelchair, this dude is actually a paraplegic. Like the gunshot, completely blasted his spinal cord, and so he has to roll around on it. This guy has fought several high-profile legal battles involving First Amendment rights over the years, setting legal precedents in the Supreme Court for free speech. And if you win a case in the Supreme Court, that means all other rulings are ruled by that one ruling. You may not like Larry, you may not like his magazine, that's fine. I don't think I'm necessarily a big fan of him personally either, but the adult industry and the right to free speech are closely related. And if he wasn't already discriminated enough for being a smut peddler, he is now a part of a marginalized group. He is now a, a member of our group. He's a person with a disability. And he found a way to make it happen regardless of obstacles. He grew up in one of the poorest counties. His mother had multiple affairs. His dad was super abusive. He left home at an early age. He forged his birth certificate so he could join the army. He got addicted to gambling and then got kicked out of the army, decided to take over his mother's restaurant and then turned it into a profitable restaurant and then opened up a bar and then opened up clubs, which originally the Hustler Clubs. After that, he decided to publish a little two-page magazine and then when a big recession happened, he decided to turn that into a magazine and became a overnight millionaire. I know and I'm sure you guys know, especially if you're an older audience watching, that this dude has done some shady stuff. Like, he bought some pictures from a paparazzi of uh, one of the first ladies sunbathing and even published it in his magazine. So, I'm not praising this man for being a good person, but what I am praising him for is fighting for our First Amendment rights. Even more now than ever, being a person with a disability, like it feels like no one cares about us. Like if you look at the stuff that's happening around Corona, government um, cutting our funding to wheelchairs and insurance and just all over, I feel like everyone has had their chance except for disabled people and now is our time. Like we make up 20% of the population. Like one out of every five people have a disability. We are a powerhouse that can come together to make great social change. And um, I think that, I don't know if I'm ready to be responsible for that. I don't know if I'm ready to be a figurehead for that. Um, maybe someone else can do it, I don't know. But I just know that there is a large group of us that are tired of being treated like second-class citizens as disposable and not being taken seriously uh, in life and in business. Um, it's time that we, we completely change all these stereotypes and I think that we do it first by being a power of example and secondly by fighting for our rights. A lot of people that end up having to use a wheelchair let that wheelchair define who they are. And these are some examples of people that use a wheelchair as a tool to help 
help them become the best version of themselves. Don't see it as an obstacle. Don't see it as a burden because without the wheelchair, you would be stuck in bed and truly unable to live the life that you wanted to do. If there's other people that you think I should have mentioned, please be sure to leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. I appreciate you for coming along with this journey for me and I hope that you leave with new inspiration and a new drive to be able to follow your dreams and achieve the goals that you want to. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.